Catholic family. Saint Rita of Cassia. You're about to witness the power of my right leg. We'll see about that. I'm gonna slam this right into the back of the neck. Be quiet and play. You're wasting energy talking so much. like a postcard. All right, so? Saint Rita of Cassia, patron saint of impossible causes. Oh, I see. It's a holy card of a saint. Come on, I'm gonna take another penalty. Hang on a second. Don't you realize what we found? Hmm, what do you mean? This isn't a typical holy card. It's a miraculous one. It says it clearly right here, patron saint of the impossible. Now I get it. We can ask St. Rita for anything we want, no matter how difficult it is. Exactly. We can ask her for impossible things. Things children like us could never normally ask for. Right. We each have to think of a wish. Like she was the genie from the Aladdin's lamp. This is better. The genie of the lamp is just a story, but this is real. Imagine that. Well, I can imagine a lot of things, you know? Well, choose one and ask for it. First, we'll have to find out more about the life of St. Rita. Yes, we have to make sure she won't let us down. Well, let's go to the Salesian Youth Center. We'll sure to find a book about her life there. Okay. This book is fantastic. I told you, in the Salesian Youth Center, they have tons of books about saints. Did you know that St. Rita's real name was Margarita? But everyone called her Rita. She was born in the year 1381 in a little house in Rocca Perenna in Italy. Listen, this is really interesting. It seemed that God had special plans for Rita right from the moment she was born. According to the tradition, when Rita was a baby, bees would fly down onto her lips and leave honey on them. Didn't they sting her? No, they didn't. It seemed to be a miracle. One day, a peasant oh. with an injured arm saw these bees and ran to shoo them away. Go on, scram. Oh. At that moment, his arm was healed. That's amazing. It was a miracle. I told you, St. Rita is the patron saint of impossible things. She never fails. Now I see. Hey, now I know what I'm going to ask for. Have you thought of a wish? I'm going to ask to win the science competition in school. The first prize is a trip to go visit NASA. You dreamed of doing that since you were little. Yes, I have. Hello. Hmm. What are you hiding there? Nothing. Nothing? Let's see. Hey, get out of here. We're talking about boys' things. Hands off our book. I just want to know what you're hiding. A book. So why all the mystery? Give it back to me. St. Rita of Cassia. What's so special about this saint? Nothing. Right. You're not fooling anyone. Give me the book right now. All right, all right. Calm down. Hey, Mom. Yes? I need you to tell me what you know about St. Rita. You need me to. Is this homework from school? No. It's just that Alex and Sergio are very interested in this saint, and I don't know why. Well, let's see. St. Rita didn't go to school, so she didn't know how to read or write. But her parents, Antonio and Amada, gave her a good religious education. So really, her only book was the crucifix. Ever since she was a child, she told her parents she wanted to be a nun. Did she become one? You'll see. Rita grew up and became a young woman. Rita, you must marry Paolo Mancini. But father, I want to be a nun. I know, daughter. You've been saying that since you were little, but... But we want what's best for you. And Paolo Mancini is a good boy. He has money and is well-respected. <laughs> You'll be happy at his side. You won't want for anything. 
Don't cry, my little one. You know your father and I would do anything to make you happy. I know, Mother. Well, then? I will marry Paolo, if, if that is what you wish. My daughter, we have considered this, and we believe it's what's best. <sighs> but Paolo turned out to be a violent man, a drinker, and unfaithful. Did he treat Rita badly? Very badly. Rita suffered a lot during the 18 years she was married to him. She prayed hard that he would change and give up his life of sin. And did it work? Yes, prayer is very powerful. Rita, my dearest, I have to talk to you. Paolo, what trouble are you in now? Do you owe money to someone? <gasps> no, it's not that. I've come to tell you that I'm going to change my life. I beg your forgiveness for everything I have done to make you suffer. <laughs> From now on, I'm going to be a good husband and set a good example to our two sons. May God be praised. May God be praised. I know you have prayed hard for me. God has made me see that I must change. That's wonderful. Absolutely. But their happiness didn't last long, because a short time later, her husband was murdered. Oh! Some neighbors brought his body home. Father, I vow to get revenge. You can depend on me, too. Boys, don't say that. Vengeance is a terrible sin. Mother, we can't just let this be. Whoever did this deserves to die. No, son, no. Forgive, as Jesus did on the cross. You expect us to sit back and do nothing? Out of the question. Come on, brother. First, we must find out who did this, and then we will plan his death. You've inherited your father's character. Rita prayed hard for her sons to abandon the idea of revenge. Lord, you know how much I love my sons, but I would rather see them dead than have them become murderers. Please, don't let them follow in their father's footsteps. I don't want them to end up like him. And God listened to her prayer. Her sons fell seriously ill, and Reader cared for them. But my sons, are you still unable to forgive your father's murderer, even when you're so ill? If Jesus, when he was nailed to the cross, could forgive his executioners, why are you not also able to forgive when you are so close to death? Very well, Mother. You've persuaded us. All right, from now on, we forgive our father's murderer. My boys, I'm so happy. I want you to go straight to heaven. In that case, call a priest to hear our confession. You have made me very happy, my sons. Very happy. So you're going to ask St. Rita to let you win the science competition? That's what I said. What experiment will you do? I don't know. That's up to St. Rita. You're not going to do anything? No. St. Rita will do the experiment for me. I'm going to ask for a racing car. What are you talking about? You don't even have a driver's license. I'll ask for a license, too. You're both crazy. I don't think you understand. She's the patron saint of the impossible. You have to ask for impossible things. Hey, maybe we have to make our wishes on St. Rita's feast day. Do you know when her feast day is? Well, let's go see Father Michael. He'll tell us. St. Rita? Yes, May 22nd. What's wrong? That's tomorrow. That's right. Father Michael, I have a question. What is it, Paula? Was St. Rita a nun? Yes. But Sarah's mother said she was married. Well, she was married at first, but after her husband died, she wanted to join the Augustinian convent in Cassia. You must understand, Rita. In this convent, we only admit unmarried girls, not widows. I understand, Mother Superior, but couldn't you make an exception? I'm very sorry, believe me. But it's impossible. That's all right. I have no doubt that it's the will of God. You know, 
I'll live in my house as if I were in holy orders. I'll pray all day and help the poor. That seems like a very wise decision. Oh, Rita, come in, come in. I've brought you some food. May God reward you, my child. Rita dedicated her life to helping the poor every day, not just materially, but also spiritually. She read and meditated on the passion of our Lord. Thank you for reading the gospel to me. We have so much to learn from Jesus. Rita, can you ask the priest to come tomorrow to give me Holy Communion? Of course. And so time passed until one night, while she was praying, St. Augustine, St. John the Baptist, and St. Nicholas appeared to her. <gasps> Rita, come with us to the convent. We will help you to enter it. Suddenly, Rita found herself in the middle of the convent with no idea of how she had gotten there. Thanks to this miracle, the Mother Superior realized that God wanted Rita in the convent and she accepted her as a nun. You see? St. Rita did lots of miracles. It's true! God grants her incredible miracles! To test her obedience, the Mother Superior at the convent asked her to water a shriveled old vine in the corner of the courtyard. Was it all dried out? That's right. Was it dead? Yes, and normally, no amount of watering would have saved it. Sister Rita, but can't you see that that vine is dead? I know, but I'm following my mother superior's orders. And then, to reward her obedience, God brought the vine back to life, so it was covered with green leaves. It's a miracle. The Lord be praised. Even today, after so many centuries, that vine is still producing big bunches of grapes with a special flavor. Wow! I told you, St. Rita is the patron saint of impossible miracles. I have commended to St. Rita's intercession our appeal for money to repair the church roof. Did you get the money? We're doing okay, but we still need more money. How come? Didn't St. Rita make it happen? Well, these things do take time, you know. How odd! Santa Rita didn't help Father Michael! Of course not. Obviously, he didn't ask St. Rita on her feast day. Which is tomorrow! Exactly! We'll do it properly! Okay, I've thought of my wish. I want St. Rita to tell me the questions in the math test. What, the test on Friday? Yes. But Sarah, you haven't studied at all. Exactly. St. Rita will tell me the questions and the answers. I'll just have to write them down. Well, I'm going to ask for something much bigger. Oh, yeah? What? I want to become a princess and live in a castle. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> well, you've been watching too many movies. Well, that's what I want the most. Tomorrow, I'll wake up in a magnificent castle. I'll have heaps of dresses. Okay, okay, if that's what you want. Mom, tell me more about St. Rita. Well, let's see. St. Rita meditated a lot on the Passion of Christ and wanted to share his pain. And how did she do it? Well, one day, when she was kneeling in prayer before the cross, a miracle occurred. Another miracle? That's right. A powerful light shone from the crown of thorns onto Rita's forehead, and the stigmata <gasps> of Jesus' crown of thorns appeared on her forehead. Lord, I offer this wound to you to make amends for the sins of mankind. Rita carried this stigmata for the last 14 years of her life. Amazing! Rita dedicated herself to caring for the sick nuns. Of course. She had always helped the poor and the sick. That's right. And after becoming a nun, she carried on in the same way. Here, sister. A little food and water will make you feel better. May the Lord repay you, Sister Rita. You are like my guardian angel. Please never leave me. You know, sister, our Lord does the same. He is always with us.
My science experiment? The questions for the test, where are they? I can't believe it. St. Rita let us down. Yeah, when I went outside, there was no racing car. And I didn't wake up as a princess. We have to go talk to Father Michael. We must have done something wrong. And that's the story. Yeah, St. Rita let us down. Sergio, <laughs> is that what you think? Here, you can have this holy card. It doesn't work. Did you think the holy card was like Aladdin's magic lamp? Well, it's not like that. A holy card is just a reminder. It reminds us to pray, that's all. But in that case, why ask for the intercession of the saints? Yeah, why ask for help from God? God helps us if we make an effort. I mean, if we do everything we can to do things well. He doesn't perform miracles? He performs miracles in very exceptional cases, but normally he helps with the little everyday things. You mean we can't ask him for important things? Of course you can. But for now, the most important thing is for you to be good Catholics, which means to be good people. To study, obey your parents, be charitable, pray. Right. Obviously, I'll actually have to do the science experiment to win the contest. And I'll have to wait till I'm older to get a driver's license and buy myself a car. This evening, I'll have to study for the math test. Goodbye to my dream of being a princess. Well, that was silly. Oh, really? Well, your racing car was even more ridiculous. Okay, that's enough. The important thing is that you've learned that God helps those who help themselves. Father Michael, how did St. Rita die? Did she die from the stigmata? Uh, <laughs> no, stigmata don't kill you. St. Rita became seriously ill and had to stay in bed for four years. Four years? Yes, they were hard years for her because she suffered a lot. Lord, I offer up my suffering to pay for the sins of mankind. I accept these pains with joy. I am only worried about one thing. I would like you to send me a sign that my sons are in heaven. Rita asked for a sign. Suddenly, she had an idea. May I? Oh, come in. How are you? Do you need anything? Yes, I would like you to bring me some roses from the garden of my house in Rocca Perenna. Roses, but it's winter. It's not rose season. Please? Very well, I'll do as you ask. It's unbelievable. You were right. It's a miracle. Thank you so much. Now I would like you to return to the garden and bring me a basket of figs. But Rita, what's wrong with you? I told you it's the middle of winter. I won't find a single fig. Please, trust me. All right. It's amazing. I can't believe it. It's incredible. How did you know there would be figs? It's a miracle. Thank you, Lord. What's going on? Now I know that my sons are in heaven. For all these reasons, St. Rita is known as the advocate of the impossible. No wonder! Rita died in the year 1457 when she was 76 years old. Just before she died, Rita had a vision. She saw Jesus and Mary surrounded by angels, as if they had come to take her soul up to heaven. Many sick people who came to touch her body were cured. It's incredible. Even after she had died, she still performed miracles. Well, that's the story of St. Rita. What have you all learned? That asking for the intercession of the saints isn't the same as magic. And that we shouldn't ask for silly things like racing cards or princesses' castles. And that we must make an effort to be good Catholics in the little everyday things, like studying, helping out at home, and obeying our parents. Great, you're very smart. Yeah, 
Dad, look what it says here. 200 years after the death of St. Rita, some white bees emerged from the walls of the monastery of Cassia during Holy Week and remained until the feast of St. Rita on May 22nd. Later, they returned to the holes until the following year. That's a beautiful miracle. Wait, wait, there's more. Pope Urban VIII ordered that one of the bees be brought to him. He attached a silken thread to the bee and then released it. And do you know what happened? Why don't you tell me? Well, the bee flew over 85 miles back to its home in the wall of the convent in Cassia. And you can still see the bees there today. That's incredible. <laughs>